father had gone on a journey and was not due back until late. At about two or three o'clock, I think, when the afternoon sun was shining and nature was at its best, I happened to be standing all alone, my mind full of delightful thoughts, at a window overlooking the garden at the back. Then, across the garden by the wash house, I saw a man dressed exactly like father, the same height and the same walk, only much older and with a stoop. I say he looked older, but this was only the impression I got. I could not see his face because it was heavily veiled. Slowly, deliberately, he came toward me. He passed my own little plot of garden, and then a strange fear crept over me. I began to cry out, my voice trembling. Father, father. He did not seem to hear, did not even turn around, but passed straight on toward the group of fir trees which divided into the main path of the garden. I waited, expecting him to reappear on the other side of the trees, but the prophetic vision was gone. This all took place in a short space of time, but it made such a vivid impression on me that the memory of it is just as real to me as the vision itself. Marie was with you in a nearby room, and the way I was calling Father frightened you both. Marie ran into me, trying to hide her feelings, and said, Why are you calling Father like that when he is away? I explained what I had seen, and to reassure me, you told me it must have been the maid who had drawn her apron over her head to try to scare me. When Victoire was asked about it, however, she swore she had never left the kitchen. It did not make any difference anyway, because... I was convinced in my own mind I had seen a man, a man exactly like father. We went out and looked behind the clump of trees, but there was nothing there. Then you told me to think no more about it. But how could I do that? This strange vision kept coming back to me, and I often tried to lift the veil which hid its secret, while in my heart I was sure it would be lifted entirely one day. You know all the rest now. You know that it really was Father whom God allowed me to see coming toward me, bent with age and with the symbol of his dreadful trial upon his venerable white head. As the adorable face of Jesus was veiled during his passion, it was only fitting that the face of his faithful servant should be veiled during his time of humiliation and so in heaven shine with all the greater radiance. I am full of wonder at God's ways. A father loves to share with his children the joyful anticipation of the future he is planning and of their rich inheritance, and so God let us catch a glimpse of this precious cross to come. It did puzzle me, nevertheless, why he should give this vision to a child who would have died of sorrow if she had understood. It is one of those unfathomable mysteries which we will understand only in heaven, then our wonder will know no bounds. O oh God! How good thou art to temper every trial to our strength. At that time I had so little courage that the very thought of losing father would have terrified me. One day, when he had climbed to the top of a ladder and I was standing rather near, he called down, Move out of the way, my little queen. If I fall down, I shall crush you. My heart revolted at the idea and I came even closer, saying to myself, If he falls down, I will not have the grief of seeing him die. I shall die too. I cannot tell you how much I loved him, and I admired him in everything he did. When he used to expound to me some of his ideas on serious matters, as though I were already grown up, I would tell him in all simplicity, if you talk that way to the great men in the government, they would make you a king for certain, then France would be happier than ever before. The trouble is, you would be miserable, because kings always are, and you would not be my very own king so I am glad they do not know you. I saw the sea for the first time when I was about six or seven and the sight impressed me so much I could not turn my eyes away. It was so majestic and the voice of the waves spoke to my soul of God's power and grandeur. I remember a man and his wife on the beach asking father if I belonged to him and saying I was very beautiful. 
I felt rather pleased at hearing this because I had not thought I was, but father stopped them from paying me any more compliments. As you had always taken great care to say nothing which might destroy my childlike simplicity. And I thought no end of you. I attached little value to their admiring words and glances and thought no more about the matter. That same evening, when the sun appeared to be sinking into the vast stretch of the waters beyond a golden path of light, I went with you to sit upon a lonely rock. I gazed for ages on this path of light and you said it was an image of the path to heaven when grace lights up the way. Then I thought of my heart as a tiny ship with white and graceful sails gliding down the middle of a path of gold and I resolved that I would never sail it out of sight of Jesus so that it might voyage swiftly and in peace toward the shores of heaven.